bite size 24s, what you're going to be doing now is deciding whether you're going to do a final exam or whether you're going to do a project. Personally, I would do the project. And let me tell you why. You're going to take some aspect of your life and you're going to analyze the science of it. Now, that may not have sound as exciting to you as it is to me because I love science. However, that doesn't mean that it won't actually be interesting to you. All of this project is centered around something that you do. So what do you do that you like so that we can find a little bit of science in it? Is it a sport? Is it cooking? Is it um, a hobby? What do you do that you like that we can analyze? This should not be something that you're just making up out of nowhere. This should be something that is connected to your life in some way. So I'm going to give you some examples and explain how the project's going to work. I want you to think about that as we do it. Where in your life can you connect to science? And trust me, there's a place. If you're not sure, again, always contact me. Let me know. Ask the question, where do you think? If you want to think about this project and you're trying to figure out, hmm, what should I do? Maybe send an email to your teacher that says, I really like doing these things. Where is there science happening in that? And we could figure it out with together. Your teacher is always here to help you. Make sure you ask the question. You're going to need to do a video, a podcast, or in person, or Google Meet, could be either one, um, to present your project. It's going to be worth 20% of your marks is taking over your final. And it needs to be 8 to 10 minutes long. Now that seems really long until you figure out what we're going to ask you about. You need to choose one of the following. You do not need to do one of each, just one of the following. So where does your life connect with chemistry? Now, we already did a chemistry lab, and if you did the chemistry lab, a similar project, it could even be that next question that you were going to ask, and you could try that, or you could have something else connected to it. It doesn't have to be something that happens in the kitchen. It could be, say, if you like camping, you could talk about combustion. If you like swimming, you could analyze pool water, or you could look at... Why do they even put chlorine into pool water? There are so many different parts that you can use chemistry, where you do use chemistry in your real life. Disease prevention was our second unit. So what do you do that prevents disease? Now this could be something that's very personal to you. If you have someone in your family who has a specific disease that you would like to look into a little bit more to understand it better, maybe to understand some of the processes or different ways that we try to prevent that disease, that this would be a great way to do it. If there isn't something known right now to prevent that disease, but you wanted to learn more about it, again, contact your teacher. It will probably work for this project. So this could be anything. You could be talking about what happened during COVID-19. That would be one that most people could relate to very quickly. In my family, we have a lot of cancers. So you could talk about cancer. We don't have a cure for cancer yet. And is there preventative measures that we could take? Some of them aren't preventative, but they give us early information about it. That would be a similar thing that we could look into. Um, what can we do to look into like even Parkinson's disease or Tay-Sachs disease? There's many diseases out there. Is there one that relates to you or your family that you would like to look into more? That is what you would do if you wanted to choose the disease prevention one. Energy transformations. You're going to look at energy transformations that happen in your life. This one is really good for sports. So if you love sports, where are their energy transformations in sports? This can be very, very simple in that you find the transformation really easily, but your analysis of it is going to be where we're going to look at what is better. How can you become better and more efficient at your sport? How can you use the information that you have learned in science and translate that into becoming a better athlete? Or maybe you don't like sports. Maybe you love to go to the amusement park and you want to look at the energy transformations in amusement park rides. Or you want to look at the energy transformations that occur even just coming to school. What energy transformations is there in doing homework? Could you find that? Those are all 
things that you could use. Make sure you're always connecting them back to things that we learned in the course. If you're not sure, contact your teacher. They're happy to help. The last part is safety and trans transportation. This goes through so many different things. If you're interested in like the speed trains, if you're interested in biking, if you're interested in skiing, if you're interested in, oh, this again could go almost into any sport, anywhere where you have a safety equipment, anywhere that you use safety equipment, you can apply to this section. So where in your life do you have safety equipment that you wear and why do you use it? How does it help you? What is the purpose? These projects, again, because you're relating them to your actual life, what you do outside of school, the goal would be that they are them and that you're able to use them. So we're really hoping that we can connect to it. Now, just to go on a little bit further, in your presentation, you can present it just like you're giving information, kind of like I'm doing it right now, and that's completely fine. If you want to make it fun or you want to put in a little bit of extra, you can make it into a children's story, a news broadcast, a detective story. Any of those things would be fine. Or you can do a simple presentation like this. Both are great. You need to catch the audience's attention. Please don't look bored. Move your voice up and down like I'm doing. Talk with your hands. Engage the audience. Ask questions. All of those wonderful things. Because you want them to pay attention until the end of the video, until the end of the presentation. We also have this rubric here so that you can make sure you have all of the things there. Make sure you look at what the multipliers are. So the most important part is that your content is accurate and makes sense and connects to your life. That is the most important part. Then you need to have your delivery needs to be, you know, engaging, important, all that good stuff. And then finally, your organization that makes sense. It's easy to follow. So. This is your final project. I'm so excited to watch them. Can't wait. Make sure you contact us if you need help.